I've seen you guys' comments, and it's finally time for the third and final part of the Phobies tier list. Let's get started. Update from Future Me, if you don't see any of the alien phobies from the recent update, that's because there'll be a separate tier list video strictly for them. Alright, back to the video. First up is Alligator. Alligator is definitely strong in the lower ranks because players have less options to summon a strong tank. However, it is a much better deal to summon Quagmire who has slightly less health but has two keys less. It's also very hard to have an Alligator be effective and I find most players will charge in and end up sacrificing it for a worse trade. So, Alligator gets a C. Next we have Blastomatic. Blastomatic overall is a great counter to mechanicals, but can also create destructive plays with its line attack. The only real problem with Blastomatic is the one movement, and in big maps this can sometimes cost the game, so Blastomatic will get a B. Brony is a tough one to rank. I'm seeing more and more players experiment with its ability to disable all damage, however I still think 7 keys is too much for an ability that can affect your phobies and requires too much positioning. Brony will be getting a B. Fire Ant's concept of being able to place traps over walls is super interesting, but isn't needed. There are many other cheap trapping phobies that can be just as effective as Fire Ant, so it'll get a C. Fish Tank, much like Alligator, is just not the best card that can be played. Fish Tank does a hell of a lot of damage, but can be easily countered by electrical phobies, so it gets a C. Fleshcrawler is similar to Brony, where it takes a lot of repositioning to make it worth it. Fleshcrawler's ability just does too little damage to be worth 7 keys, so it gets a D. Fowl is one of those phobies that seem better than it actually is. Its ability to disease phobies with range is great, but its basic attack range and being undead holds it back. Fowl will get a B. Hevo 2.0 is one of the best phobies for big maps with abyss tiles. I find myself getting consistent sneaky kills by catching my opponent off guard. However, Hevo 2.0 in small maps is something I wouldn't recommend unless the AoE is necessary, so because of that Hevo 2.0 is going to get an A. Leshy is a phobie with a super cool concept, but is very situational. Its stats are fairly good, but I tend to see it use its ability once and not use it again. There are also cheaper healers, and by summoning a 7 cost healer can easily put you behind in the game, so Leshy gets a C. Motherload, much like Leshy, is a cool concept, but isn't effective. More often than not, Motherload ends up sacrificing itself to use its ability just trying to get an equal trade. Motherload can be countered in so many ways, and there's just so many better options for 7 keys, so Motherload gets an F. Mr. Tramples is a tough phobie to position correctly, but when you do, it can pack a huge punch. Its ability and 3 movement force your opponent to adapt their playstyle around Mr. Tramples. The only negative is when Mr. Tramples goes in, it usually ends up dying, so because of that, I'll be giving it a B. I feel like Oopsie Baby was a missed opportunity to be something much stronger. For a 7 cost, its health and damage are so low, and even its ability isn't great. Not to mention, it's mechanical, making it an easy target. Oopsie Baby is unusable currently and gets an F. There's not much to say about Sparky, except that it's great at countering mechanicals. If your opponent has 3 or more mechanicals, I would recommend using Sparky. However, anything less than that is not worth it, so Sparky gets a C. Pterodactyl is a great basic 7 cost phobie. Its ability to revive and its high health make it super annoying to take down. Its range and movement speed are nothing special, but make it very versatile, so Pterodactyl gets a B. Barzilla is one of those phobies that can slowly turn the tides of who is winning. Its high health makes it very hard to get rid of, so Barzilla gets a B. Beauty is one of those phobies, when you see it come out, you just know you're going to have a tough time taking it down. Beauty forces you, much like Tramples, to reposition your board around its basic AoE and line attack. If your opponent knows what they're doing with Beauty, there's a low chance of winning. Beauty gets a comfortable spot in A. When it comes to boss, I think a lot of people overestimate it. The fire AoE is definitely cool and something to play around, but boss is usually not viable in most situations. There's usually a better summon than boss, and because of that, it'll get to C. Dozer is essentially a Gazoon type with an absurd amount of health. Dozer paired with a healer can be almost impossible to take down. Its ability is decent and can snag a few keys, but its movement and key cost can easily put you far behind in a game, so Dozer gets a B. Heartbreaker is all about using its ability, and in most cases, it's never used effectively. As an A cost, Heartbreaker is way too weak and too situational, so it gets a D. High 5 is great if you're an aggressive player or in maps where rushing the heart is easy. However, in any other situation, High 5 is not very strong. Because of this, High 5 will get a C. Mildred is one of those phobies where if your opponent doesn't have a counter, then it can be extremely strong, but in most cases, Mildred will be a waste of keys. Even though its ability is an absurd amount of damage, there are many better options, so Mildred gets a C. Russell's ability to poison the entire map is one of the most game-changing abilities. 
From what I've seen, it forces your opponent into one of two scenarios. Summon healers and heal the poison phobies, or rush the Russell so it can't use the ability a second time. Russell's ability is super interesting, but has to be used at the right time, so Russell gets a B. Yeti is an interesting phobie that I feel like should be used more. It's essentially a rocket man with two more key costs for the two attack range. So instead of freezing a unit from three range away, you can now freeze it from four range away. However, its damage and health are low for an eight cost, so Yeti gets a B. As much as I want Smother Mother to be a good phobie, it just isn't. To have a pole or even a stronger Molly Bully on the field isn't worth it when there are better alternatives. It is always going to be better to save four keys and summon a Mofat instead, so Smother Mother unfortunately gets a C. Shrek is basically a super strong jar cannon. It's a fantastic phobie to use if you need map control back and is deadly against jar cannons. Not to mention it's undead, so even if it gets damaged, it can be easily healed back. Chuck gets a definite spot in A tier. Overall, Hevo 3.0 is a solid 9 cost. Because of its AoE damage doesn't fall off to 50%, it makes for a great board cleaner. Hevo 3.0 gets a deserving place in A tier. So I wanted to talk about Akira last because out of every single phobie in the game, I would say Akira's ability is the most unique. Being able to pull all phobies one tile closer makes everything super complex and allows for plays that would have been impossible. Akira's ability may allow you to kill an enemy's phobie that you couldn't kill before, but in the process it would most likely also die. If Akira's health was a bit more, it would definitely be very strong, however as Akira is now it just seems too costly to be worth it, so Akira gets a B. That just about covers all the phobies currently in the game excluding the alien phobies. Let me know what you guys think about the final rankings, and if you want to join some of my events and earn some coffee, you can come by the Discord with the link in the description. That's all for now, and I'll see you guys in the next one.